staff. Um, this is the November meeting for FEPAC. I'm going to call roll. Uh, Chair Cruz is here. Vice Chair Lamarski. Here. Commissioner Garcia. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Thank you. <laughs> you might want to turn that down. Just say that. <laughs> Commissioner McGrath. Commissioner Barrow. Commissioner Zecker. Here. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, we've got upcoming events and just a reminder to look at Flagstaff 365 for uh, what's going on. Hopefully people are on that email distribution list. I find that to be the easiest way to get information rather than having to go to the website. <clears throat> Commissioner McGrath just joined the meeting. Just joined the meeting. Great. Thank you. So that will be reflected in the minutes. Yes, sir. OK. Um, public participation. It's not, it's not, we're not there Okay, um, this, this Friday at four o'clock, they're going to be showing a, a film. It's the Flagstaff debut of Stuart Udall, The um, Politics of Beauty. And it features interviews with people from the Udall family and also with Chantra Begay from town and uh, Deb Holland, our Secretary of Interior. And um, four o'clock in Liberal Arts 120. So that's on the MAU campus. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I also highly recommend, if you haven't gotten up to the Center for the Arts, the new exhibit, the 25 million stitches, one stitch, one rib history. And it's, it's out there till January 22nd, but it's a fantastic house. If you look on the last page of your agenda on that meeting day, I highlighted that for everybody. Oh, very cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, any public participation? I received no emails or contact for public participation. <clears throat> okay, then. Moving forward, we've got um, minutes to approve. Did everybody have an opportunity to read? And look at the October minutes. Are there any questions or comments about the October minutes? Hearing none, may I um, have a motion to approve the October minutes as submitted? So moved. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the October BPAC meeting minutes as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? The motion carries and the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> looks like we have more announcements. Okay. Yes. Well, that was up, part two. Was up, upcoming events. So, okay. uh, you know, so now it's announcements, and uh, so we have a new project administrator, Susan Hardiman. And uh, Susan uh, comes with some uh, wonderful uh, public art experience, and uh, Chair Cruz was on the selection panel with me. <coughs> and we, um, you know, and Susan also has been an interior designer. She makes her own jewelry. She has a lot of talents. We're looking, you know, today was, uh, you know, we drove up from Phoenix together at 5.30 <laughs> in the morning. And in total darkness. <laughs> in total darkness, but with a gorgeous sunrise. But yes. uh, Susan, um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit more. Thank and you. then I'm going to have all the commissioners just, you know, give a little bit of background about yourself so that. Okay, you know, you can get to know that. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be here on my first day um, at City of Flagstaff. I am very excited about this position, and I'm drawing from um, a commercial interior design degree um, with construction management experience and public art experience as uh, Janice said, uh, with ASU on a Tempe campus at the Office of the Architect and City of Peoria and Scottsdale Public Art. So I have some jobs. <laughs> 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 Not to blow my 
Romeo nor, so <laughs> I'm here to help. So. Oh, we have plenty of <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Right. All right. So maybe a, a nice. few introductions. Should we start with the people who are here? The and people then online, please. Oh. If you wouldn't mind turning your camera on, um, if you were prepared to do that, that would be wonderful. Tina, do you want to go first? Sure, I'm happy to go. Hi, uh, welcome to the team. I, I'm Tina Zecker. Um, I've been on the commission for just over a year now, um, and I work at NAU in their Office of Undergrad Research, and uh, we're excited to have you here. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Hi, sure. My so my webcam's actually broken, so um, I'm just going to be a voice. But my name's Claire Commissioner Johnson. Um, I'm a nurse here in town, and uh, have only been on the commission for a couple months, so I'm pretty new as well. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McGrath. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Matt McGrath. Uh, I'm uh, with Tina. I've been on the commission for just a little bit over a year now. Uh, I work for the U.S. Forest Service there in town, but I happen to be down in the valley today and tomorrow I will be driving up for that 5.30 a.m. start up to Flagstaff and looking forward to an equally good sun, uh, sunrise. So welcome. Uh, great to have you at the city. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Garcia. Yeah, I'm Anthony Garcia. I've been on the commission uh, longest, six years now. And um, so I've seen this go from a staff position of one half public person to um, what looks like it's going to be a more robust future for your support. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm Sandra Lebarski, and I've been on the commission for about five years. And um, and was on the commission when Anthony was chair, which was a very good orient orientation for me to how the commission works. And it's been really great to see the commission be as active as it is and to have such marvelous staff members. So oh, welcome to, to this outfit. <laughs> and it sounds like you're just going to continue the tradition. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And we met previously. I'm Mike Cruz. I uh, work for a national nonprofit based out of DC, the Literacy Lab. And I've been on BPAC, uh, <clears throat> I think, two years. Um, I've just been chair this summer, since the summer. Um, so that's fairly new. And um, I uh, do a lot of community service in town, which I really believe in. Uh, I serve on some county councils, and I actually just got on to the City sustain equity, sustainability. Um, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, community advisory council. I think it is. I can't remember the exact name. We've only met once, um, and on a school board committee. So I um, I do a lot of service work, and um, really happy that you're here. Really happy that you joined us. Um, I hope that. Uh, Looking for housing goes relatively easy. Putting it out to the housing guys. <laughs> right, right. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Sure. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, now we have commissioner's announcements. Are there any announcements that have not already, <clears throat> not already been made? Chair <clears throat> Cruz, I believe you have one. Yeah, I had it as number three. Um, so I guess I'll make a commissioner announcement. We want to reorder the agenda. Hopefully that will not be a problem, but we want to accommodate um, our visitors. And so what we will do is in section G, we have number one and number two and section H, we have number one and number two. But what we would like to do is move discussion item one from section H up to um, Follow the action item one and then just move action item two into that previous place. If that's okay. We just want to accommodate yeah. people's schedules. There's a lot of visitors here. So if there's no objections from folks on the phone, we can proceed in that way. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Thank you. 
So then beautification and action grants. Jenna, you want to take yes. it away? So as you recall, in October, we had a uh, new four applicants and you uh, straight out approved one applicant, but um, for we had a, a little bit of a different approach for each of the other applicants. So up first is Chacolita Mural, and um, we have Sarah Ann Leslie, and she had a provisional approval, um, just pending the design review. Yeah. And so she's here to just update us and give us the yeah. design review, and then maybe we can move from provisional approval to full approval if you like what you see. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I think it's like three. It's like a two and then three. No, four. And then we'll go back to three. So that is what I got from Dwayne as that's what the wall is going to look like. So this will go on to its Hopi pottery designs. Very similar to if you go to slide four. The one that he did at Next Step Prosthetics. Um, that's what I had to go on last month. And so he took um, the Hopi design, the Hopi pottery designs are thematic. It was going to look the same as this, but slide three is what it will actually look like. And then if you go one slide back to slide two, well, four, then three. Anyway, um, the color that it will be is the same, pretty much the same color as next, next step prosthetics, um, but a little more green. So you see like that's a little bit what it looks like in the shadow. That's what it looks like in the light. So it'll be that color green, black and white. Simple, not a lot of color. Are you going to have an orange accent or are you just going to leave the umbrella be the orange accent? I think the umbrella will be the orange accent. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the umbrella will. We are like visually um, very hard to see from the street. That little corner it just gets because of the way it's tucked in. Yeah, and there's that big kachina that sits in the middle of the plaza as you're driving by 66 and it just perfectly blocks the view of our shop for most of the time you're driving oh, by, except that big yellow umbrella kind of pokes out. So right. I'd like it to stay the access. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when you're driving down Steve's, we'll obviously stand out a little bit more. You can't see our sign from Steve's because it's right. uh, perpendicular, but hopefully the mural will help us stand out more. And uh, yeah, so, um, so my understanding is, as you stated, you know, when you originally presented, it was going to be something similar to this. And so that this is, is what it is, right? You know, this is the actual design, but mm -hmm. a similar coloration, but just a little bit more green than the blue green. Yes, exactly. That's why when I saw his other one, I was like, wow, that's like almost my color. <laughs> <laughs> it's really odd, right? Yeah. And then I think the budget was updated to. Um, it was, yeah. Eliza pointed out to me that half of the budget goes to the artist. And she said, if you need to update your supplies and materials, and I thought, you know what, I'll just add a ladder. Um, originally, he was like, I could do it with just a ladder, but if you had scaffolding. So then I just had scaffolding in there and was like, you know what, I'm just going to add a ladder because of. Uh, it's going to make his life a little easier. Right. Well, and if they, I can ask for it, why not make his life easier? Just so the commission knows, it the um, last time, because of the total budget, the um, artist fee was just, I mean, it was just like $100 more than 50%. So it was not quite in the line. It was like close. So um, Eliza worked with um, uh, Sarah to, you know, um, Fix that. Fix that. Yeah, fix that because I am putting up, you know, the. Yeah, she's putting, I'm putting up, up almost two thousand dollars to the artist uh, myself. Yeah, right. so I'm almost matching what you guys are giving me. That's nice. That's the nice. artist. Yeah. Right. So, so that is, uh, I, you know, double check that, and it everything is kosher now. <laughs> The, the tiny thing on that one slide is that it's not really artist total fees, which is 450. It's like project total fees, right? Because the artist the artist fees are 2250. All right. I'm going to say yeah. Yeah. No, the artist fees. Are artist total fee is four. He wants 4,000. Oh. You guys look at me 2250 and all. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Right, right. But if you look I up see. here, the total budget is 4678. Oh, yeah. right. So right. 
his fee that we're paying for is, you know, half, half yeah. of 4,500, because she can only get 4,500. Right, yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this was extra bonus information. We probably actually didn't need to see, but, but since you're contributing, yeah, We're just just because I it's different from last month. I want to point it out, you know. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any questions or comments from folks? Um, I I I must have been asleep or not present at this discussion. I don't remember where this place is located. I was just curious. Oh yeah, it's on Steve's Boulevard. We're at twenty seven ten in Katrina Plaza. On sixty six and Steve's on the north side of Steve's. And are you, and this is going to be in the base one right next to the chocolate building. I see where I see where it's at now. Yeah. So as you're looking at Circle K, it'll be on the wall right to your right. Good. That's a good place to know. Like that. And yeah. um, is there any other match, community match, or partnerships? No. I asked Hopi Tribe, and they said no. They're working on the sidewalk this uh, year. So it's just more of a private partner. Yeah, it's just uh, a private 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 match. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Thanks. Any other questions, folks on the phone? Do you want to go through all of them, Jana, and then vote? Or no, do you want to I, I think for that I one? place at this time that we can go ahead and um, uh, listen to the presentations and we can go ahead and make the vote after each one so okay. that, you know, uh, be more courteous <laughs> and let people leave if they want to. Sure. And stay you. if you want to, but, you know. Yeah. So. I just want to thank you. I think that's a really cool design, and oh, thank you. It's going to be a really nice addition. I think. Thank you. Yeah, I think it'll be really good. I have like a provisional block party. I'm going to throw on Saturday. Oh, nice. Given that you guys say yes, I'm going to like have a bunch of different people come out and do music and invite Dwayne and just like. When I don't you, know if he'll be able to start that When do you think it'll soon. be done? Because I know it's winter. We delayed you a month. For oh a yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood. He works quick. So that other um, mural that he did in Next Step Prosthetics, mm -hmm. that's about 15 by 20. Mm -hmm. And he did that in five hours. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Oh, it could wow. be done before the end of the year. Probably. He wants to get it done that quickly. So okay. hopefully. Okay. Yeah. He has a system. All right. He's prolific. Yeah. That guy, when I mentioned to people, oh, yeah, I you know, want to work with this artist, and everyone knows who he is. That's it's really cool. cool. Yeah. I think that when it comes to uh, paint sticking to the wall, our biggest concern would be to make sure that it was, uh, you know, the right day with the right week. Yeah. So that way, that paint will stick for a while, and you, whenever we're spending yeah. citizens' money, we really would like to make sure, even if we have to wait a little bit more time for that project to come through, yeah. make sure that it's tied to the right day and the right week. Oh, yeah. Me too, because I'm the one paying for the upkeep, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I you agree with you. Day. You have to look into everything. Yeah. Cool. I'm happy about that. Yeah. So we want to move forward to the Blackstaff High School? With the we have motion. Oh. Yeah. So I thought we were going to discuss, I thought we were going to do all no, those. No, we're going to, we're changing it up. Okay, okay, okay. So um, if there's no more discussion on the mural, then can I hear a motion to um, approve the design as presented? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the mural um as presented any discussion so let's vote all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. anyone opposed anyone abstain great the motion carries and the mural was approved as presented thank you sarah Thank you. Guys. Thank, you Yay. thank you thank you for coming back yeah thank you for having me so now we'll move forward to Flagstaff High School. Right, and um, Libby is here on the phone. Yeah, right? I was just trying to okay, okay. 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 Flagstaff High School. You, you stuck in on me. I was, I was sitting right behind you. <laughs> right, so is there any uh, additional presentation material? 
Um, I don't know if there's any material. I'm going to let Libby speak a little first, but then um, so what happened is um, Daryl Marks, who was here last time, there's a lot of chaos, of course, and joy in being involved in high school. And so he uh, is covering as a last minute male chaperone on a week long trip to California. So he took off and uh, made sure that the student's trip wasn't canceled. And then um, Libby and I have been communicating today and trying to pull together the Daryl information. So I hope you'll um, embrace the little bit of chaos that at. But I think we have some answers, though we do not have any further visuals, I think, to share today. OK, so we're just relying on the original application. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I'm not sure did I... if the commissioners brought it, but. Um... Oh. oh, Chris is here. Commissioner Barrow just joined here. Wonderful. Thank you. Good to see you, Chris. Okay. So, Good to see you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, my sincere apologies for not being there in person and also not and not having Daryl. Um, thank you, Sarah, for sharing that information about Daryl. Um, just in the last hour, I was able to obtain a little bit more information about the um, the paint that we were uh, researching. So I have three different recommendations of paint from three different artists. Um, and the only thing I don't have with that paint is the cost. Um, I understand that um, the uh, it could be prohibitive um, with one of the recommendations for the type of paint to use. Um, but they were recommending paint based on uh, the mural itself, the ground, you know, the sidewalk that it would be on, and then longevity purposes and how you um, not only apply the type of paint that's recommendation, but how you seal the paint afterwards. So there is, um, there has been a little bit of research done on that. Um, I would be relying on the artist to help further um, decide based on those three recommendations on which one is the absolute best one for this project cost wise. And, um, you know, some there's pros and cons to all three recommendations. Um, one of them is a really hardcore uh, paint and sealant, but it has limited uh, color uh, availability for that type of paint. And then another one. Um, has a sand and grit um, applied within the paint, um, but it's very expensive. Um, and then the other one is an acrylic um, paint with a cement sealer that would go on top. So we do have three recommendations um, and we do have an artist who works here. He's our art teacher, um, David Hale, and he has done murals around Flagstaff. Um, and he's very interested in being a part of the project. And then Kaylee Quick is our graphic design and she's willing to be a consultant, but not necessarily an active participant. Um, but Dave Hale has one of those three recommendations and he is willing to uh, continue that research on that paint and have discussions about the longevity of whichever one um, we are able to to pick and then the maintenance of that project afterwards has also been a point of discussion um, among the group. Thank you. So I was not at that last meeting because I was in London. Thank you for running it. Um, I don't know what I read the minutes, but I don't know what the issues were for commissioners um, last month were your questions responded to in a way that you feel comfortable moving forward with a vote or are there other questions discussion i think there was um, my my memory is that you're asking for more clarity on the project so i wonder um if you can just review the project with us again and just yeah run through some of the some of the plans uh, at the time, at least in my mind, I remember uh, flower pots, and I'm not sure how those fit in, and um, how yeah, the length of the design, and of course we were talking about the longevity of the project. So there were a number of issues. Got it, Sarah. Do you want to jump in with that, or do you want me to? Um... I I can jump in. I definitely had some discussions about that with Daryl after the meeting. Um, 
So this is very much a moment in time project where it is collaborative. So you're not going to get design work out of time. We're building the process where the students will be contributing to the design work in a participatory way. Um, and that's why in the application it shows images like this, which show people building the timeline and building a design. We would use similar um, styles. And then it might be that the, the paint comes off in a year. And one of the reasons Daryl brought this up in particular is he said, in Navajo culture, women wear long skirts that dust the sand. And the reason they do that is when they walk in front of their children, they're removing the footprints from the front of the path of their children. And so one of the reasons he and others imagine that this would be something that goes on the sidewalk and then comes off and is replaced later by a future timeline, perhaps, is that idea that you're removing things from the path in front of the children. So if it were a permanent installation, it kind of over ties people to the past. But if it is this marking of a point in time where we're remembering and we're moving and we're creating space for the children at the high school to create a new future, they imagine that being more part of the narrative that they're sharing with students and the contributions they're making to that space. And I think one of the questions was, um, what is the, as it's being brushed away, what's it going to look like and what's that removal process going to be like? So my understanding from the back and forth we've had on materials is that it will be a material that could be power washed off. So it may fade over the course of the year, but if it 12 to 18 months would be the period of time, it would be actually on the sidewalks at the school. And then they would go back to their previous condition. Or if you don't like those, um, I had mentioned the um, parking spaces at the high school and um, it's, they are in various stages of just you know, being disappeared. Um, and it wouldn't be like that. Then. It might fade over the course of time, depending on the weather throughout the year and how many free thaw cycles, uh, free thaw cycles occur. But the idea is to have it there. There can be pictures, another memorial memorialization of it as a space that was created for the centennial period. Um, but that it would not be permanent. It wouldn't just fade out. But they'd act that the school could actually go in and and remove it from the sidewalks. Is that correct, Libby? Where does that match the conversation? Do you think? Yes. Having? And depending on the paint we end up choosing, you know, will um, uh, will depend on you know the removal process itself. But really, in general, you know, it's our hundred year Flagstaff High School is a hundred years old this year, as you all know, and. Um, we are wanting to really do a lot of reflection of um, the history that's gone, the decades and, and the history that's gone into um, this high school. We're also really proud that the um, Arizona Department of Education has given us an A for the first time since 2013 for all the hard work. And, and I only say that to say um, we're at this really pivotal time in the history of this high school where we are looking back in order to look forward. So we're really wanting to think about all of the things, the foundation of Flagstaff High School that has made it what it is today. So in a way, in essence, this project is so much um, about the process more than the final product. So the actual act of um, reflection and done in collaboration, as Sarah said, with the kids and the staff and the community members, um, and then getting that um, painted onto the sidewalk in a very symbolic way, and then um, getting some photographs right away to memorialize it, and then using that to launch us forward into our next centennial to think about um, the things we want to hold true as our foundation of Flagstaff High School, and then what are some things that are um, that we need to be looking at that are new for us, that we want to, um, who do we want to be in the next 10, 20, 30, 100 years? Um, so again, it's so much about the process here. And of course, we want to create beautiful art that um, can be enjoyed by the whole community in the meantime, um, and that it can be participatory. Now, now, Principal Miller, given that you haven't finally determined your material your actual paint that means that you haven't finally determined how it's going to be removed 
but you're telling me that you'll definitely use a a material that can be easily removed from, you know if once it starts to deteriorate over time and who will make that call about when you know when it's the moment to remove it because depending on your material it might be nine months or it could be 23 months it just you know you won't know until it's out there so who's going to make that judgment call I think right and we don't know with weathering too right and footsteps on top of the sidewalk so I think we need to have a small committee here Daryl myself Dave Hale the artist and the group of students that makes that determination and I don't think that that can necessarily be determined on the front end, but we could give maybe a span of time that it would, um, you know, it, we would hope that it could remain on the sidewalk for a year, right? And invite people from the community to come see it and interact with it uh, so that it's meaningful. And then we assess um, after six months and then again in a year, is it time? Is it time to remove this? Um, and really taking a look at it. Um, is there parts that can be preserved? Um, you know, I think we're going to have to assess along the way, but the last thing we want anyone wants is there to be an eyesore left um, in our community because that defeats the whole purpose of the project in the first place. And uh, Jeff Bauman, the city transportation engineer, has gone out and walked the site with Daryl and I and made sure that there was lines notes about where things should be painted or not and they are they are you can scroll down to the map going to be using part of the city's right of way um as well because the spot in the middle is the old school steps so between those kind of two trees you can see the gap facing elm street um, where the where the little walkway goes so right in the middle yeah, of that right block, Mm -hmm. are the steps to the old school and so the mural will start at those steps and come around the entrance of the existing school and the only thing i think we could guarantee about the design is that it will have green in it and there will be somewhere an eagle <laughs> <laughs> so there's been discussions of things like mere like drawing the old school building into the space in front of the steps and things like that but the the purpose of this project is to let the students and the teachers build community through those decisions rather than bringing them here and having them all worked out with the committee. So it's an act of trust in art and <laughs> community. I, I actually trust that the design work will be quite vivid and wonderful. My concern really is about as it as the months go by and about how it how it ages. Uh, because that is a you know well walked path by the high school, a very public area, and um, and I think it's important that it's you know not just kind of you know doesn't crumble. I share the same sentiment. <laughs> and um, while we're talking about this, uh, the magic of this being the process of this. I was wondering if you guys could fold in like a lesson about um, how this was funded, um, the process you guys had to go through here, so that way the kids could learn not just on the art side of things, but how um, the community gives back to uh, fund these type of projects. Please. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, if that was Anthony, I would definitely echo what he said. Artists should understand the, the business end of, of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Tina, do you have a comment? Yeah, I'm just uh, curious. Can you? I might have missed this, but can you review what you see as the the time frame for getting the art actually installed? Like, do you see this being a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months? I will just before um, uh, Principal Miller answers. Uh, all uh, applicants have a year to complete. But I, I'm sure that they, because the centennial is this year, they're going to want to do it faster than that. A year from date of approval? Yes. So, yeah, we were hoping to have this uh, installed before the end of the year, before graduation. Um, graduation is on May 26th, and that is the seniors who will be the 100th year um, of, uh, of graduates of, of Flag High. So, 
um, ideally, you know, at least a month before that, but it's hard to know how long uh, it's all going to take, but that is our goal. Claire, do you have a comment or question? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, so I guess my concern is that because we still don't know what the material being used is, we also don't know any environmental impact that it might have, that it's going to wash away and then into you know, the, the surrounding environment. Um, so there's no way for us to know if what we're funding is going to be a pollutant um, for that area. And I mean, we have the fish pond right next to the high school and a neighborhood. So I guess that is a big concern of mine, I guess, um, not knowing exactly what the material is, is something that um, makes me hesitant with this project. Claire, I appreciate you bringing that up as well. Um, I'm an NAU graduate from the environmental science program there, and that is a very strong interest of mine as well. We have some student groups working on environmental impact with the city actually on various different projects on our property. So um, thank you for bringing that up and we will add that. I'm taking notes and we'll add that to um, the, uh, when, when we further research the tank. <coughs> So is the commission ready to vote or is there further discussion? Uh, I just appreciate the fact that my questions from last time were answered about how long it would stay up and be, be evaluated. So thank you. Thank you. You know, I do the one I, I last time it was mentioned that there will be more something more permanent as well to mark the occasion. Um, and that I mean, that seems really appropriate. Um, can you can you tell us anything about that or about the yeah the balance between having this uh, temporary art um, experience and then what what it is he planned for the permanent uh, memorial of this? Well, of just photographs and film um, is the is is our one idea to memorialize this. Um, you know, at, sadly, someday this building will no longer be here, um, probably in 10 to 15 years. Um, it's reached its um, expiration or is getting close to that. Um, so everything we have on this campus, we have multiple murals, we have multiple, um, um, gosh, trophy cases, all kinds of things all over our building that we will have to begin thinking about memorializing as well. So this would be included in that. I think at the last meeting that the, there, there was Sarah and Daryl actually went over some other things or events that were happening along with the Centennial, but they aren't actually part of the grant. So um, I think they were you know, lovely and sounding, but they weren't actually funded by the grant. So. And maybe the one thing we haven't answered is the flowers. And I think that the, the idea there was that there are some places along the timeline where taking culturally significant flowers and rotating <laughs> them along the timeline would be appropriate, depending on, you know, this is Native American Heritage Month or other, other like memorialization times along the way and I don't know what the full calendar of that will look like but that like marigolds in October and you know um, there was another flower that was mentioned for November and so the idea is there's also a greenhouse on campus I believe so there can be some protection for them as well and they would come out during events and other things to kind of be part of the experience because there is a desire to kind of include that from the student perspective. Anything else, folks, before we take a vote? Um, I had a question about the artist fee. Um, what does that include for the artists? Well, we are using the uh, budget of the grant to offer that as a, a stipend. Now, our artist um, is one of them is Dave Hale, who is our uh, high school art teacher here who has done um, murals throughout the city of Flagstaff. So he's well aware of, um, you know, the limitations of the grant. And so uh, we need to work with him on, um, you know, that portion and 
he's 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 very willing to work within that budget. So process oriented, will he be teaching courses? Will he be leading? Will he be adding his art or all of the above? Uh, no, I think it's really um, specific to our centennial. So the art is um, really looking at, you know, decades over time that have led up to our 100 year uh, symbols that represent those decades, um, symbols that represent our cultures here um, of the families who make up our school. Um, and so really using the kids and uh, Dave and Daryl um, in our different um, various different clubs of students to be able to um, give input on that art. And so then he and a couple of other students who are deemed as quality artists would be the ones to actually put that on the sidewalk. Um, Commissioner Garcia, if I can also answer because it was asked in the last you know, session and um, I know you weren't able to tune in that whole time, but you know, the, the fees that were going towards the teacher artists were outside of the classroom, you know, fees, and they were not exceeding the 50%. Thank you. All right, folks. So can I get a motion to approve the um, project as presented with uh, questions? Answered and discussion that we just had. Yep, I'll make that motion. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the Flagstaff High School Centennial Timeline Art Project. Any final discussion? Um, I think my yes vote would be provisional on just making sure that paint is non toxic. Thank you. So, all in favor say aye. Uh, anyone with a nay? Anyone abstain? Commissioner Johnson will make a note of your vote in the minutes. Thank you. And staff will follow through. <laughs> Thank you. So moving forward to the uh, pollinator education mural. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Principal Miller. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. So, um, can we put <laughs> on the application for the pollinator? Yeah, you can take a seat anywhere. Everyone, this is um, Robert Chambers. As you know, that uh, you guys reviewed the application last time, and we're pretty satisfied with. Um, the application, but because the presenter couldn't be here, you um, asked for continuance so that you could hear if you had any questions uh, up from Mr. Chambers. And I owe you an apology and thank you very much for your patience and allowing us to do this again. Thank you very much. Sorry that um, sorry that it went that way. Um, so thanks for making the time with me. So this um, yeah, so I'm you can do free oh, awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm Robert Chambers. I'm an artist and illustrator with a nonprofit here in Flagstaff called Terra Birds, and we deliver uh, outdoor garden programming primarily um, at the to K through 12 students and uh, at FUSD and charter schools. And we also help the sustainability department deliver um, the program for the community gardens. We also have a work program for at risk youth. And um, so this is kind of in partnership with the uh, sustainability department and the funding from this grant would be used to deliver a mural depicting many of the important pollinators uh, in Arizona. And this would be on the southeast, southwest side of the sustainability department office, which is the entryway to the Thorpe Annex and what will be so there's a few different plans in there, the, the three plans that have been proposed so far for that um, sustainability hub for, for that side of town. Um, and so this mural will help beautify the entryway to that. And in the future, we'll kind of anchor off that part of a larger outdoor classroom area that will be a 
pollinator garden themed classroom area that's in the entryway there. Um, so the short, can I read you the short list, list of the pollinators that I'd like to paint there? There's 15 of them. Um, they were going to be the Rufus hummingbird, Ruby throated hummingbird, the Anna's hummingbird, bumblebee, carpenter bee, the mason bee, the yellow swallowtail butterfly, the monarch butterfly, the dainty sulfur butterfly, hawk moth, the Mexican long tailed bat, the lesser long nosed bat, a fly, and the robo beehive which is um, from the University of, well, it's one of many projects that this one's from the University of Maryland Institute for Advanced Computer Sciences. And um, they have these drones that use artificial intelligence to autonomously navigate obstacles as they uh, carry pollen between plants on simulated bee hair. And then when the weather turns bad, it, it calls it all back to the hive. So those would be the 15 um, pollinators painted on the side of the of the building. Um, and then. Um, uh, and I think at the last meeting, we also looked at some previous, you know, work that you've done, yeah. you know, for like the Benito Gardens and. and uh, yeah, at, at the Benito Garden. And I think there was one from the Isabel Street Garden and um, the entry sign at Ponderosa High School were there, but I was, do everyone got a chance to look over the grant and that's kind of the overview, but I'd love to hear your comments and questions. Um, if you have any. I thought I read a concern about kids being allergic to bee stings. That was the um that was a different project. Oh, it was the okay. one that got approved. That was the oh, okay, okay. one that got yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I was just thinking of the minutes. I think um, we were interested in, or again, in my confusing things, to see a mock up of the design. So that would be uh, <laughs> the concept of it. That's the south side of the building, and that represents about a little bit less than half of the building, but the rest of the building is exactly the same as that, and it would just those the placement of those pollinators would carry on down the side of the building. So it would mainly be the pollinators on that kind of um, light taupe background of the existing building. So they're going to be painted all the way around the building or just on that, sides. just on that face on the on the on the south uh, west side that faces the entryway to the annex. Are you going to label them so people actually learn? That yeah, so we'll have the scientific name and we have, we'll have a nice little painted banner, you know, like a like a label and they'll have the scientific name and their common name and then uh, an indigenous name, their indigenous uh, names. Yeah. Do you think this, you're going to be doing this work kind of at a discount for the amount of work that you're going to be doing, so to speak? Um, I try not to. Yeah. <laughs> It's close, but uh, I think that um, I'm fairly quick once once I'm fairly quick in the design process and the execution process just because um, gardening nonprofits um, don't exactly pull in the <laughs> all the zeros, so we have to be fast. Um, so I'm, I'm confident that it can get done. Well, yeah. I guess my, my point was that we don't really see any other contribution besides ours here. Um, so if it sounds like you're going to be kind of contributing a little bit extra um, to the design by what you just said now. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is a, I'm really excited to be a part of this. It's a cool project. Yeah. And I think that you've already run this by the sustainability. Folks. Yeah, this has all been in collaboration with them. Yeah. It's not your first community sustainability partnership, is it? No, no it's, not. it's an ongoing, ongoing partnership, a really valuable one for Terra Birds in the city. Sure. Yeah. Folks on the call, can you see the presentation and do you have any questions or comments? Can I can see, see the. Go ahead. No. Oh, I was, Chris, I was just going to say, can see it, and I don't have any, any questions. Thank you. Ditto. Ditto. 
If there are no questions or further discussion, can I get a motion to approve the pollinator education mural at Thorpe Park Annex? Motion to approve. It's been moved and seconded to approve the pollinator education mural at Thorpe Park Annex as presented. Any discussion? Very cool. Really cool. yes, thank you for doing it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Appreciate it. If we can have a vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? The motion carries and the project is approved as presented. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. the time and the permission. I have an injured son at home, so I'm going to do your work. Thank Everybody. you very much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. So folks are going to move forward to a discussion item at this point in time. Um, Chris, just FYI, we're going to talk about H1 now, Beaver Street, Aspen to Birch Pilot Infrastructure Repair Project. This is just a discussion item. So we have with us Rebecca Sayers, Parks Recreation and Open Space Director, and Scott Overton, Public Works Division Director. And um, I know I mention all the time in my work plans about Euro, the uh, expanded right of way, and this is a something that's come out of that um, every other week meeting. So go ahead, uh, we'll turn it over to um, Rebecca and Scott. Yeah, so uh, in a minute here, I will share my screen with a, a very um, rough sketch of what we're talking about. But to give some context, and then I'm going to turn it over to Scott to talk about specifics. But thank you all for having us, first of all, and for your time. Um, we. Uh, just can I interrupt? If we're supposed to be seeing something on the screen, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sharing it quite yet. I'm going to give you. Oh, some okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll get there. Um, so to provide some context, um, the city deals with infrastructure all over town, um, and when sidewalks become trip hazards or unwalkable public works tends to have to go out and manage that. And unfortunately, that's happening quite a bit around downtown. And it's mainly because of the street trees that are installed that are now quite large. Um, so the root systems are pulling up pavers, sidewalks, damaging gutters, um, et cetera. And so clearly replacing street trees is a huge undertaking. And we've been trying to discuss as a team, this enhanced use of rights of way team, different ideas. And one idea that has come up is a pilot project that would deal with just a half block in downtown Flagstaff. The Downtown Business Alliance is part of our um, team that meets every couple of weeks. And so they have been uh, with us every step of the way with this conversation we did present to their board. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, but we wanted to review this pilot project idea with you. Please keep in mind, I think what you might be most interested in is the aesthetics of what trees, what with the, the stamp, we're talking about some stamped concrete instead of pavers, what might that look like? Um, things like that. We don't have those details quite yet. We can keep you informed if you're interested uh, in those details, happy to do so. We're just kind of looking for um, really, I think this is mostly informative to let you know that this is something that we're talking about as a city and it's to manage several um, different challenges that we're facing right now with our infrastructure downtown. So I will share um, my screen. And then, whoops, you don't want to see the email. <laughs> Sorry about that. I clicked the wrong button. And for those in the room, Scott actually has some handouts for you. Okay. 
Yeah, you got you guys can you guys can be jealous. We got we got really a nice nice handout. Yeah. But yeah, let me fill out a little bit of the logistics pieces for Rebecca. I um, did a great job of introducing the topic, and then we're uh, here to solicit some, some feedback. Um, and, and really, Rebecca's right. It's, it's a team effort between parks and from public works. Um, clearly, public works has the infrastructure side of the house, but yet parks takes care of all of our amenities, our street trees, the benches, the things that um, make it very different than what we would consider normal infrastructure. But um, looking at all the downtown blocks, this has been a pretty high problematic area for us for the last couple of years. And we've had to do a number of uh, kind of emergency tree ring removals and great removals in the area. You might have been walking around and seen where a large concrete collar gets removed. Um, and maybe a break gets removed because the tree has become so overgrown that the tripping hazard has now created a pedestrian safety issue. And we're pretty conservative on these removals. Um, generally, we're looking out for really true trip hazards. We're not trying to you know, really nitpick the area. If you wanted to nitpick, we'd be pulling it all out. Um, so it's tough. It's, it's a 25 year old infrastructure. Um, everyone likes to be there, but we also want to make it a nice walkable um, pedestrian friendly corridor. So just to give you some perspective on this simple concept sketch uh, at the top of the page, um, it is north and that is Birch running east to west. It's a one way street. Um, and then if you were to walk south, uh, you'd be on Beaver Street. Uh, for some orientation, the upper left hand corner of the box would be where Dark Sky Brewing's patio is. Rebecca's kind of scrolling her cursor in that area. Uh, that gives you a little bit of context to where we're located and then directly across the street to the east would be the um, vacated Aspie, or excuse me, um, Hufford Hortzman Law Offices, a uh, former police station when Anthony and I were young children roaming the community. Um, not that we were ever wound up in that location, but um, <laughs> gives you a little perspective. And then at the bottom of the page, that would represent the mid block alley. So we're really only capturing one segment of a half block. And it's really unfair to say it's a complete half block. It's just one street segment. And this straight segment was identified um, after some walking tours um, and some general observation. And it's also an area that has some substantial damage. So at each of these tree locations, um, you'll see there's some shading that looks fairly dark gray on your screen or on your paper. Those are the curbs that are truly damaged and needing to be removed. There's also some sidewalk panels that have some gray shading. Those also are damaged and in need of removal. As we continued the process of taking a look at this, um, our, our engineer and public works did this quick sketch to give us an idea of what the recommendation would be. So he has the quantities on this page, gives you an idea, but the four street trees at this location would be removed. Uh, they're very large overgrown trees today. Um, this is one step in our process to have a conversation about what that means. Uh, DBA was another step as Rebecca mentioned. Uh, we would not only remove the trees, but we would remove the curbing and the sidewalk and street infrastructure that is damaged and need and replacement um, in these locations. But while we were here thinking about this, we really started thinking about the appropriateness of what this would look like long term. So we're starting to kick around some different thoughts and concepts using this as a pilot. Would we want to do it all the same? And I, and I think what you'll see in this uh, picture is the answer might be no. Um, we do have one option to replace it as like. So if it has pavers, replace it with pavers. But we're also exploring concepts of a stamped concrete, maybe a color finish and a stamp that maybe looks very similar or something that everyone can agree upon. Um, because from the maintenance perspective and 270 freeze thaw cycles, pavers have been a nightmare for us and they, they don't set well in our um, climate. So this is an idea we've had. Uh, the red markings are comments that came back from the Downtown Business Alliance. Uh, comments that come out of this group might become a different color. And then we're gonna start moving towards kind of a final concept. Uh, we're, we're making our rounds to gather feedback, listen in on what some of your highest priorities might be. We'll incorporate those into the plan and into our concept. We'll report back to Euro, and then um, some of our next steps are to continue the dialogue and, of course, secure some, some funding for this. Uh, the entire district is multiple blocks, 
clearly we don't have funding for even a segment of a half block. Uh, so we don't know what it looks like from the perspective of how do you get the entire downtown district completed. But we'd like to start somewhere so that we see some redevelopment or we see some blocks that maybe become a new use. We might be able to steer them towards what we would prefer. Um, Rebecca, I hope I covered most of it. Um, Goes through the red. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. That, there's no red markings for those who are online. I've sent, I sent an updated message, but uh, all good. You all, know good. What? all good. I all good. Try, all good. I tried to convert it to PDF to bring up, and then you couldn't read the black markings. Is that right? All so good. I figured that you could talk about. No, so for, those, we were great to get for those of you <laughs> online, um, Rebecca had the original. I apologize. It didn't have the red lines on your section print, but uh, where it says remove tree, we added language that clearly says replace tree. <laughs> we, we thought it was important that that was not the goal to just remove the tree. We would replace the tree. And is that for all of the trees or is that just that tree? It would be all four. Okay. So great comment. I'll have to asterisk the other three locations. All four would be replaced. Stamped concrete would go in the paver segments uh, between the tree wells, and it's designated as that hash mark. Uh, we do not have a color or a type that would be determined. There's some discussion on maybe doing some field trips to see what really would look best and be most acceptable. And then one real interesting point that I had completely overlooked, but uh, the new valve box lids on all of our water meters are like a bright blue in color. Um, there's been some conversation of could those go back to a cast iron or maybe a, a metal type lid versus the new bright blue lids. And uh, we have not had the conversation with water services, but we thought it was a very really good suggestion at least to incorporate their comment um, and think about that. So three comments that are not on the screenshot, replacing the trees, stamped, colored, and concrete <laughs> still be determined, and then the valve box lids or the water boxes uh, just to be considered something maybe different than the bright blue lids. Um, Can you be a little more specific about what, what would you what would you be replacing the trees with? Sure, I think I might let Rebecca speak yeah. to it. It's really in the parks wheelhouse and um, I get all my species mess, messed up, but. So we are reviewing more appropriate sizes that so that we can avoid hopefully um, this species that get very large and cause these types of problems. So smaller root systems, that is damaging, etc. So we're still doing that research again. That's another thing that would uh, be determined later. But we're trying to look for smaller trees, some things that have come to the top of the list so far that work well in other places in town uh, and to a degree downtown uh, honey locusts is a species that works well here. Uh, the blade, the autumn blaze maple um, is another one and choke cherry is one that we thought might be nice because it does provide spring flowers, um, which are quite beautiful and we have some of those around City Hall. So those are at the top of the list for now, but we're continuing to do research. And the trees right now are what kind? They're a mix, quite honestly. A lot of them are, I believe, uh, the ones that are causing the most damage. And here I am at Forrester and I just lost <laughs> the tree. Um, I think they're maples, but they're a different species. I mean, they're just getting, if you go walk this section and look at these trees, you'll see that they're just very large. And I don't think they were ever intended to be there this long. Right. Um, and I did want to add that, as uh, both Rebecca and Scott have said, funding has not yet been determined. And as you remember, and, and, and that we have the tree creep maintenance amount that we put in because it was recognized that a lot of tree grates were being removed because they became tripping hazards as the um, you know, roots became big and the city manager very much wanted them replaced. And then that led to a whole discussion. And this is part of the evolution of that discussion. And so we do have that funding and it will be part of, you know, how much to use for this, um, you know, pilot project. So 
um, you know, we do already kind of have a line item that's related to this. That will be just a just an ongoing discussion between the departments as we as we go forward. You already spent some of that money, Bill. I thought that you know it had already been a project on replacing the. The they also actually it never came to a, a resolution. I wanted so I can clarify a little bit. Yes, go ahead. Um, a the the funding that is in there for that line item is from well before when the city manager had the. Yeah. This has been about beautifying the downtown, and it's been a standing line for knowing this was coming. But actually, Mark Delucido, some years ago, did do a couple treatments using some of this funding to try to figure out how to move a pilot project forward. What we determined is those were not quite right. Um, and uh, and actually, the, the Euro team uh, with Eliza and now uh, Jana and stuff have been a part of this conversation, too. So so just so you know, I think Eliza was, was part of the initial walkthrough. Um, so so we've been a part of this, but it, it was, um, you're remembering, if, if I'm guessing correctly, you're remembering the fact that we did fund a couple um, temporary or, or spot treatments to try to see what would work. And uh, there's some mixed reviews there. I don't know, um, <laughs> but I don't think that it was quite seen as as the solution. So we're looking at a little bit more comprehensive approach than those kind of spot treatments. And, and these guys are coming up with a, a whole sort of a corridor, whole. which I think will result in better, uh, better impact. And I'll add that um, through these many, many conversations yes. at Euro and with uh, the Downtown Business Alliance, we have kind of landed on the rubberized surface treatment, which we did. That is one of those pilots that Mark tried, and I will tell, I'll be the first to tell you it looks awful. Um, but there are new, since that time, a lot of other cities and frankly manufacturers and contractors have figured out how to make that look a whole lot better and so eliza and i have had quite a few conversations before she left about um, there probably are some ways that we could use that product which is good in terms of a maintenance aspect as long as it looks good and there's a lot of new options out there with different textures and colors and different you know it can almost look like a pea gravel but it's this rubberized surface um depending on the installation technique and the product itself so we would like to if we're kind of leaning in that direction i think our next step would be um before moving forward with this project we can start nailing down what product and aesthetic we're, we're willing to try here. And again, if it doesn't end up the way we thought it would or should or ends up being a maintenance nightmare, like that's the whole reason behind this pilot is for us to kind of work through those questions and ideas. Claire, do you have a comment or question? Oh, sorry. My question was the same one that was already asked about the trees. I just forgot to put my hand down. Okay. Do you know how many trees there are? Total downtown is 278, I believe. Just in this section. Just in this section, it's four. Oh, oh, so you're removing all the trees. Yeah, and again, if you go walk this area and really look closely, <laughs> that's me and it's hard for me um to remove healthy trees i don't think these these are not and we do have arborists on staff certified arborists on our staff they've done tree assessments um, these trees are not the most healthy in the first place and they just continue to cause a lot of damage it's, it's absolutely it's absolutely a hazard and um frankly it's they cost litigation for the city so it's very expensive overall and it's a problem that that we really need to fix scott so when you're talking to uh, parks event to bench funding also 
Is it dependent on, um, excuse me, is that to nudge funding? No, no, we just work with them in partnership to deliver the project. Um, I'm sure that um, we're going to cobble together funding from a few different sources. We know we have some earth monies that are highway monies that are available for some of the road infrastructure pieces. Where I think we're going to have the most challenges probably isn't the trees or the road. It's going to be the you know, stamped concrete. It's going to be the improved surfaces that are kind of above and beyond um, general maintenance obligations. Um, and to put it in perspective, um, if we were to just replace the pavers, we're at about forty thousand dollars for this segment, and if we were to go to a stamped concrete, we're at about fifty thousand. Um, so they're they're not cheap improvements. That gives you a little perspective. But it also seems to fall right along the lines of beautification, so it makes sense um, that we use those money for that. Um, is there anyone on, from sustainability on the Euro? They um, are invited. Um, they, uh, we could certainly have a conversation with them. Um, I know that they are, they've been in different meetings where we have talked about this, so I'm sure they're aware. And of course, the reason I ask is it's just, you know, hard to think about removing very large trees at this point where we're also talking about carbon sequestration. And so I'm just wondering if they've had, if they've weighed in on that analysis. They understand that the, the trees are damaged and on their way out. And as long as it's already, if they will be replaced, they will be replaced. And they'll be replaced with large trees. And if they are going to have to. So one of, one of the reasons that these trees are such a problem is because the underground infrastructure is just not big enough for them. And we're not going to be able, with this project, uh, you know, it would take a full street rebuild to make a nice build a culture box that is appropriate for a tree to be supported of that size and not cause infrastructure damage. So, we're going to need to go with small trees to right size them to the existing area that we have for them to be certain. Like small by large, I meant they're, you know, you're not going to like a tree that I can afford to plant in my yard. They won't be seedlings. They won't be seedlings. What's right? Yeah. Well, and again, we don't have those details, um, but mm -hmm. as you all probably know from your own projects, the larger you get, the more expensive they are. Another thing to keep in mind here is we do not have um, irrigation in all of these areas, and so they're going to need to be hand watered, um, which our team is willing to to do on this. Um, hopefully, with some support from the neighbors when we move downtown. Um, but we, we've got kind of scattered infrastructure for irrigation. Of and actually, we have trouble turning it on because sometimes it floods some of the downtown businesses, like their basements and things. So it's this is a challenge all around. Um, you know, smaller trees to start with is going to be what we'll need to do. I have to be honest about that. Is it fair to say? I mean, if we have a traffic crash today and something is removed, it's typically a two or three inch caliber yeah. tree that gets replaced. So you know, it's about six or eight feet tall couple inches in caliber, but these trees are by far 12 to 16 inches in caliber diameter. They're they're very, very large. You're moving over the street. Right. No, no, I just it's just um, I think it's important to um, that, that the community doesn't have to wait mm. 20 years or 15 years before it, that there's a beautiful tree there again, uh, and especially I, in this kind of public, very public place. I absolutely hear you. Part of the problem, though, is the great big beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the root. No pun intended. Yes, it that's, was. Yes, it was. That's, that's, the, root. <laughs> that's the root of the problem. Is the infrastructure there is not intended for trees of that size, and so we need to limit the size of the trees in order for them to not for us to just not keep going through the same cycle. No, I understand that, but the trees that you spoke about. As possible replacements, they're still going to kind of get big. Yeah. They will grow. We're hoping that their um, mature size is smaller than mm -hmm. what we have down there now. 
And I would just like to say, I'd like to, I, I mean, my question is about how mature a tree are you able to put in there? So that it's not so this kind of barren, uh, you know. So I don't your comment from the yes. trail of ours. Yes, I have to try to afford the biggest yep. of that species that we can. That is and we're sure open to some suggestions. We have talked about vases. We've talked about large planter boxes. Um, we've looked at different communities that have different um, mechanisms to store a tree. Um, our difficulty here is our, our sidewalks are also very narrow, so we don't have a lot of room to work with, whereas you might see a community um, in Colorado or California that has a 10 foot wide width that has room for those large trees. Um, we just flat don't have that type of width. So if there's some other things you might have seen or heard of, we're certainly happy to hear those. That's why we're here is to take some feedback. So there was also in Kenton, Oregon, um, the Masons got together and when they took out this huge tree that was an invasive or whatever, um, they went ahead and put up a sculpture um, that, that came back to me. So I don't know if we, all we want is trees here. Maybe we have plat platforms for public art. But what I <laughs> did want to talk to uh, let, like some of the newer commissioners to, to help understand, like when we're doing the funding and, and when the funding rolls over, when projects don't work as well, um, this is a kind of a, a, a good example of a continuation um, for that funding um, when um, different departments find it appropriate to kind of move in and keep it boxed in the same uh, category as what we were using the funding for the tree planters for before. Um, understanding that this could be a more robust project and this is just a pilot project. Um, it's good to know that uh, funding does change, uh, but when we use it for the same purposes, it kind of stays the same as an evolution. And uh, lastly, Sandra, I think like from my perspective, I, I completely get where you're going with the more mature trees, but um, I'm excited to watch uh, trees grow as long as they're not, you know, easily destroyed as as youthful trees. Younger than me. Yeah, <laughs> I might be able to see them <laughs> get to their full maturity. And in 30 years, I'll understand your pain that much more. But uh, I'm okay with watching them, watching them grow and seeing the characteristics bloom in our downtown area. Um, Any other questions or comments from folks on the call? <clears throat> well, thank you all for your time and your comments, and we'll sure. certainly keep that in mind as we go forward. Thank you. You're welcome to keep the drawing. I do ask, uh, it is somewhat a concept. <laughs> we haven't sent it out to the public. We haven't sent it to the newspapers. Clearly, it's a public document, but we ask that you not maybe uh, say this is a done deal quite yet. We're still working through details, but. You're welcome to the copy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good idea. Thank you. So we're back to our action items, and we're talking about the downtown connection center art concept. Okay. Okay. So let me wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, we have a very full meeting today. I, I know we say that every time, right? So, all right. So, today we're focusing on the developments of two primary artworks at the Downtown Connection Center. Um, the colored art class, um, which is just going to be an update, uh, and then the plaza sculpture. And that is, uh, you gave a provisional approval, and now we're seeking full approval of the art concept. Um, so a recommendation for it to go for the city council for approval because um, they are the ones who will do the actual you know, final approval for the project. The two artworks are linked through their common references to pine trees as well as their color palette. But we're going to just kind of do a just a quick review so that people are reminded of some of the uh, inspirations and um, a summary of the artwork that's on the site. So, um, you know, the one of the inspirations of this is that a grove of trees is a metaphor for a community circle. <coughs> um, you know, we have the uh, the pine tree, the astronomical, uh, uh, not only a low, low observatory, but um, astronomical, ah, tripping over that word, sorry. 
um, the alignment of the stars and sun. How's that? <laughs> along, you know, along with the telescopes, um, the peaks, uh, obviously the mountain line identity itself and, and their logos were an inspiration. Um, and then uh, this is a, a slightly updated uh, site concept. Um, from the last time you saw it, uh, we do have five different art locations, although we're primarily talking about two. But I really need to point out that for the sculpture, I want you to see that here is this part right here. I don't know if it's circling online, but it's Grove Sculpture Phase 1. And then if you go over to the Civic Space, there's Grove Sculpture Phase 2. Um, this is going to be a little it, bit... It's Yes, it's not circling on mine. Can I can you tell me more clearly which ones you're referring to? Yeah, so you see the two circles, the two red circles, the bright red dots. Uh, yes. Yes. So if you look at, um, you know, the one on the left. Is says Grove Sculpture Phase One. OK, and, it's, it's on my phone. I can't read that fine print, but thank you. OK. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were on the phone. <laughs> that, that's okay. <laughs> Oops. So and phase then, one is, is by the building. Okay, so now, okay, thank we're, you. now we're getting the text of what we're talking. I somehow hit something. How can we stop that? Options. It's, it's a setting in your PowerPoint. You have to go in and turn off the subtitles. I didn't, I accidentally turned it on. I don't mean to. Let's see. Maybe if I do that. There. Now it's gone. Yay. <laughs> that was going to be a little weird, wasn't it? <laughs> so, um, and then if you look right way over to the civic space, uh, Chris, uh, then there's another red dot, and that is the location of the sculpture for phase two. And there's five to seven years estimated between phase one and phase two. Okay, so um, we have one of the reasons that this came about is because Milton Avenue is being widened by ADOT. The building got shifted over. Um, and that, that's part of the reason. The first, it was designed for the civic space originally, but because that project wasn't going for a number of years, um, it was we were looking to do the sculpture sooner. And we decided maybe to go put it back in the building plaza, but then the building plaza shrunk. And so now we're going to be building a little plaza, actually in what will become the parking lot, but the parking lot won't happen until phase two. And so we can build it and we can have it there and then we can move it later. It's not ideal. It is going to cost more money, um, but it was of all of our bad options. It was kind of the least bad option because um, if we delayed it for five to seven years, it might not happen. And that was just a real, um, a, a real problem because we might lose these artists. It was just, you know, that it was just too precarious. And um, like I said, we had hoped to put it in the building plaza itself and leave it there permanently. But when the ADOT Milton Avenue widening shifted the building and we lost a good portion of the plaza, that didn't, we lost that option. So this is our new solution. Um, so the art glass is, um, of course, on the building itself. Um, you know, I'm just going to go through the other projects really quickly because, um, as you know, we're still planning on doing a crosswalk. Um, it's still uh, in the city process of whether we can have the traffic safety approval for that project. We haven't any project progress to report on that at this time. Um, the other uh, is bus bay rotating art. Um, we're not really sure because the bus bays aren't designed, whether they can accommodate that. We're looking at possibly using the utility cabinets and wrapping it instead if the bus bays don't come out. Um, I mean, don't work out. So um, we're in talks about that. But there'll be something, you know, 
uh, you know, that's rotating for, you know, local artists. And then the other project that we're working with historical preservation on is um, some Rio uh, Route 66 bridge historic panels that the federal government is actually funding because they're removing a, a, that historic bridge and they owe some remediation. Um, that project has not yet initiated. So with our two main ones, this slide shows the original concept um, and uh, that you guys approved in June. Um, the artwork's primary imagery and the way it's backlit at night has not changed. <coughs> um, however, the architectural design of the building changed. <laughs> okay, which did change the layout of the artwork. So this slide shows the three images that are being overlaid to create the glass composition. The three images represent the three components of the mountain line logo, but are portrayed through a different graphic technique. And this shows how the colored light illuminate the glass from behind and will change the way the imagery appears at night. And this is all from the June presentation. There's nothing new here. Um, and then once the architectural design is set, um, the artist will translate the concept into a dot matrix. These are on the glass by silk screening enamel onto the clear glass. Then it's fired. That fuses the color with the glass so it will never fade. Um, the glass will be sandblasted onto the back to make it translucent, which is necessary for the lighting effects and will make the image pop more both in day and night. The glass panels will then be tempered and assembled into an insulated glass unit. So it's like going to be sandwiched in between. Okay. Very, you know, very elaborate, very exciting, you know, very fun. Okay. Well, it just occurred to me though, I never asked, what is it going to look like during the day? Yeah, no, it's going to, you'll see the day, the day images, it, it will have color and it will be the, um, you know, you'll see the day image and then in the, in the night image. So here's our updated comment. So this is a day image. You'll see all three. It will, um, you'll see all three colors and it, that one image will stand out. So the glass area on the south side over the front door decreased in size due to architectural modifications. So it is slightly smaller. Um, but they then decided to wrap the design around the east facade so that the old overall art area is now larger. Um, only the south facade has the three colors of the overlaying images. The lion and the peaks didn't lend themselves to the wrapping. So the east facade only includes the red tree layer, which will be composed in dots just like the south facade. The east facade will also though be back at night, but it won't have that animated. You know, it won't change. Um, like the um, the one with the three images well to the south. So, um, you know, this is just a quick study model to look at the wrapping effect. The tree will wrap, you know, the corner to continue the forest image. Um, the east side of the trees will face the grove sculpture, which will also reference trees. So there's a nice correlation there. Well, that five to seven years while they're together before we have to separate them. Um, the east facade is what people entering the building from the bus plaza will see first. The south facade is what people driving or walking on Phoenix Avenue will see. Um, the architectural layout of the glass panels um, shown here is, it is, is not final. Um, and, uh, you know, but we're, we're still dealing with those mullions where that line, you know, the line that goes across you know, the design is going to go. Uh, we had one rendition where it looked like it was going to go right across the eyes. So we're we're working with the architect, but we're working on the solutions, you know. So the artists here do it where they want it, <laughs> um, where they want the millions to cross, but we're still working with the architect team on those things. Um, you know, so, you know, we, we're trying to get as few of breaks as possible. And the architect is really, they, they're working with us on that. Um, so here we see the concept, you know, for the south and east images side by side and kind of see the, you know, 
the, uh, you know, how it's made up. So now I'm going to show you something that was not in the presentation that I sent out to you because I just got them this morning. So the um, this is a draft 3D rendering for the night view when the light is blue. And um, that one's it's that one's harder to see. Um, and it, it it's the one that makes the mountain come out the most. But maybe, you know, then the green is what makes the trees come out. And then the red is what the map makes the mountain line come out. So that's just kind of a, a rendering. And I also want to point you over a little bit to the right of the image. You kind of see a nice little spotlight coming down. Um, not the glass, but to the very right of the image. And that's our tree sculpture with a little light on the timetable. So just, you know, just pointing out that as we um, transition to the growth sculpture. Hold on, hold on. Before you go to the glass, what what was the reason that they now want to wrap it? Well, it was partially it was because the size of the art glass shrunk due to the architectural changes. So the, the lion image was smaller, so they wanted the art piece to be bigger again. Um, and the only place to go was around the building. Um, it was also a request from Mountain Line itself that they wanted the people from the bus bay to have, a, you know, a part of the glass art. Um, and also, it was a tie-in to the tree and the, the the tree sculpture in the plaza. So it was it was those those three reasons that drove that um, drove that change. Plus, also it is kind of covering up some some. Maybe not nice features on the interior of the building. Dead space. It's helping, yeah. It's helping. But the images are still, they're still small. I mean, they still shrunk. The lion shrunk, the yeah, bounce the lion. shrunk. Right. The only thing that didn't shrink is the trees, because now the trees are wrapped around. Right. Right, okay. Yes. Yes, we had no control over the size of the building class and the architectural changes. That Those were all operational decisions. So, so anyway. That's just your update. Um, I didn't re ask for approval because it is it is still essentially the concept that you guys approved already. Um, but I did want to update you as I always promise any changes. I update you. <laughs> so there's your changes. But now let's go to your provisional um, approval and the one I am asking uh, as an action item for an approval. So this is what you saw last time. Um, and uh, so the primary elements of the sculpture are the six tree and telescope inspired trunks made from weathering still positioned in a circle to form a grove. Five of the trunks have horizontal branches which are etched with bark texture. The largest trunk marking due south has no branches or bark texture and more strongly references telescopes. And it also has an oculus through it. So. Um, these trunks is circle a granite timetable in the center. So that's like the basic elements of, of the sculpture. And this is what you guys saw last time. So this is, we have made changes. You guys came forth with a lot of different ideas and directions, but the main thrust was make it more organic, soften it. And so these are all the steps that the artist took in order to follow that directive. And, you know, I will say that they are happier with the sculpture themselves now. Oh, they're much happier with it from going through the exercise of following your direction. So um, they wanted, you know, and, and, and they are. Uh, so this is the view looking up from, this, uh, from the outside of the updated sculpture. And it's been a variety of subtle changes, which, together and, you know, add to a more proportional, layered, organic, and softer appearance. And so, you know, they really, you know, many iterations that you're not going to see <laughs> today, you know, to get here. And some of the changes that are evident on this slide is that the branch is now very in length. They're staggered and twisted on the trunks. The branches are smallest, smaller in diameter, to convey lightness, and they are of different diameter. The ones at the bottom are thicker, or a big, you know, bigger diameter than the ones at the top. 
The needle clusters are composed of cast acrylic rods now in three colors. And bells, because um, that sound element that we discussed, have been incorporated into all six trunk tips. <coughs> So this is the view of the sculpture from the inside where the branches have a kind of enclosing effect, almost like out street arms or the hand, you know, you know, the holding hands on the south side mural at the Murdoch Center. Yeah, so here is the sculpture that's shown in its phase one location. So when phase two is built, this area will become part of the bus space driveway and the sculpture will move to the future civic space. Um, to the east. The artists are working with the landscape architect to design a ground plane, plantings, bench, or, or seating wall. Here, which you see at the back of the sculpture, um, which ideally will move with the sculpture. Um, changes that are evident in this image, um, the paving rings that were previously kind of part of a hardscape are gone. Um, and, you know, so we're having a more organic, you know, surrounding with plants and boulders and, um, you know, a kind of a, a, a DG setting, adding natural elements. The six tr trunks are now angled by two and a half degrees to make them less static and ensure that, in, that sense of enclosure, particularly <laughs> when you're looking from the inside. Community symbols have been incorporated into the bark texture. Um, we'll look at those more closely later. Um, and um, we've also got hand carved bark texture has been added to the perimeter of the granite tabletop. And we have a warm uh, LED spotlight that has been added to the top of the telescope trunk to illuminate the timetable. And the ground plane has, like I said, changed from uh, concrete to decomposed granite. So this image shows the materials that we are um, uh, using uh, in the sculpture, they just include the black granite for the timetable, etched core 10 steel, which you know ages over time, and acrylic needles and prisms for the branches. Um, you know, it is, you know, kind of an interesting combination of these textures. You know, there is a bit of contrast because there's the rough steel that's juxtaposed with kind of the smooth acrylic. Uh, the red of the Corten still ties nicely with the reddish brown enamel being used in the art class. Um, sculpture is seen from the bird's eye about, you know, the shapes of the, the snowflakes and stars. And I know we went over that a lot the last time. The center of the grove is open and there are no branches. So the hexagon shape formed by the branches is more evident. And uh, the individual trunk locations mark the positions of the sun at sunset and sunrise on the solstices and the equinoxes. So it is in that way an ancient observatory. Um, the stainless uh, steel tube diagonally piercing the um, south trunk aligns with the sun's position in the sky uh, at noon on the spring and autumn equinoxes. On equinox day, sun casting through this tube will form a form an ellipse of light in the middle of the center table. Um, we are they're thinking of putting a acrylic lens on it, maybe yellow, so that the, the, the it will be a yellow sunspot. So that's, uh, that's why you kind of see the yellow light. Um, then a small spotlight with a warm LED, a narrow beam angle is mounted to the south telescope and angled to illuminate only the top of the timetable at night. And this will be um, static. It will come on and off with the other plasma <clears throat> lights. Um, so the electric cable will run inside the sculpture trunk. So it won't be seen. Um, here's a detail of the timetable, which will be made from actually very dark gray granite. Um, words inscribed, uh, describing indigenous South Side Flagstaff in Arizona history will be woven amongst the tree rings um, to create a concentric timelines. And then they've added this like bark texture around the perimeter. I, that was not there last time to reinforce the image of a cut tree. Um, most likely um, the words will be white against a dark background, but um, they are exploring the reverse. They haven't totally, totally settled on it. I will tell you that 
it from before. Um, it's going to be predominantly south side. You know, there's going to be, um, you know, but it, it is going to include the other. I have been to the Indigenous Commission and I have presented this idea to them and I have asked them for what they want to incorporate from their history versus us coming up with it. Um, also, uh, we will be, um, uh, Dr. Ricardo Guthrie and um, Celia uh, Munoz, the NAU librarian with Hispanic history, will also be participants in, in, in for the South Side timeline. And we have other suggestions too, and they're all, you know, we don't have the timeline, but I, once we do have the timeline, you know, what the actual elements will be, I will bring it back to you. <coughs> So uh, five foot diameter um, black, you know, this granite tabletop, it's set 30 inches step up on a, you know, weathering steel pedestal to tie in with the trees. Um, the examples that you're seeing of a, a, you know, that you're seeing is things that had a dad and Rugen have done before with Sebastian Mortarana. And um, they did this one piece with the Chesapeake Bay outline so you can just kind of see how the white comes out against the dark gray. Uh, the revolve image that they did for someplace else is an example of the reverse, where they made the the, the letters uh, uh, you know black, and so they, they reverse the, the process. So um, they're looking at that. Um, and then this is the um, the sculpture had those stainless steel caps, and before they were kind of a just a, a um, you know, a regular stainless steel, but the artists have now to lighten the top um, and to lighten that element, they have made it a, a reflective stainless steel so that it will actually just catch the light of the sky and the needles. And so it will be a, a kind of a lighter color on the top. It won't be as solid because it will be catching reflections. And so it will reflect uh, around it. Um, but they are gonna be putting in these bell chimes and um, these, uh, you know, they're gonna act like wind chimes. They're gonna be activated by the wind. Um, the cap has, you know, two openings on the sides to let the wind in. And the uh, <coughs> polished stainless steel, so they, you know, Initially merge and reflect the sculpture branches below and the surrounding surrounding site context. So I don't know if everyone online can hear it because I can't remember if I I was able to um, activate yes. it down. But it is supposed to be whispering pines. These are not supposed to be like gonging bells by any means. Um, they've discovered that the thickness of the uh, of the metal, you know, obviously affects the tones, and um, the size of the clapper doesn't make much of a difference. So this is a thinner wall and has a deeper sound, and um, a thicker wall has a higher sound. So they're still playing with. Um, but uh, they want, yeah, they, they want the sound to be kind of just part of that immersive experience. Of course, you won't hear a thing when the trains pass because, you know, they, that dominates. But, yeah. you know, this is for those moments between. There will be different sounds. What? There will be different sounds. They're, different they're thinking of doing different tones. Yeah, they're playing with that. That would be cool. Yeah. So, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it'll be like a Greek chime. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they can tune it that fine. Um, but the bark texture um, consists of lines derived from the bark patterns etched into weathering steel cladding with a router. And when the steel sheet is rolled to form the trunks, the lines open up. And so, um, you know, they mock this up. Um, they'll be observing the weathering effects over the coming months. Um, but already the rust forming on the etched line is widening and darkening the line in a very organic manner. And so they're really, you know, pleased with this experiment. Um, and, you know, they think that will that will also help make these, give these trunks a much more organic look and feel. Um, so by the time, um, you know, the rust runoff and the early weathering, you know, will 
uh, you know, when it's in phase one, it's phase one location. Um, we'll probably, by the time they move it, if they tend to, if they move it to something as part of a plaza versus, you know, granted, all the, all the weathering will have happened. So there won't be any of that rest runoff at that point. Um, so this detail shows the bark texture lines on the trunk. And again, you know, they were finding this pattern and it also shows some large trunk symbols. If you look real closely, you can kind of see some symbols on those trunks as much. And each trunk will receive a symbol positioned about 42 inches off the ground and facing in towards the timetable. So here's placeholder symbols, okay? You know, they, they need to be more fully vetted, but um, each symbol represents an individual culture that makes up the Southside community. And the symbols express um, each in their own unique and culturally specific way, a concept related to the community within that culture. And each, in a sense, each tree will represent an individual culture. And as a grove together, you know, they will, depict that interconnected community. The sun symbol will be used on the south telescope truck. That, that's pretty much determined. Um, the other symbols are used on trunks that loosely align with the direction of the originating culture, i.e. West African symbol is on the southeast trunk and the valley <laughs> symbol is on the northeast trunk and the Asian symbol is on the northwest trunk and uh, the Hispanic Latin uh, X symbol is on the southwest trunk and the indigenous uh, symbols on the north trunk. Um, that's kind of how they have it laid out. You know, like I said, these are placeholders. This is this is probably one of the newest elements that they they have forwarded. Um, you know, as part of this. And um, I, what you're seeing below, there aren't going to be letters. They're just showing how deeply etched. You know, that dream in a name. You know, letters you see. But that's how deeply etched those symbols will be. Much more than the um, the bark pattern. So they'll pop. Yeah, so they'll pop. So this is the detail of the branches, which will now be made from weathering steel pipe. It also shows the acrylic detail elements that have been added to the branches to bring the color, luminosity, and, and iridescence to the, um, the sculpture. So first we'll talk about these um, clusters. And again, that ball in the center will be that reflecting is, I know, you know, it's painted silver, but again, it's going to be reflecting back the colors of those rods. So there'll be about 75 now. We've increased the number of needle clusters bolted to the ends of some of the branches. These assemblies are inspired by both the stars and the needles of the ponderosa pine. Each cluster includes 15 one half inch diameter acrylic rods varying in length from six to 10 inches. They're inserted into the holes in a three inch diameter sphere. Um, and the mock up shows only one shade of green, which is more readily available. But the final assembly, they will use three colors of rods derived from the colors of the pine needles. Um, the spheres will be, again, mirror polished to match the bells and uh, will reflect the surroundings and to some extent disappear. Uh, and then, and I know these are kind of like not on nice weathering steel, um, like we're going to have in the sculpture, but all 75 branches will have acrylic prisms bolted onto their ends. And these prisms will be about a one inch triangle shape with about uh, five inches exposed and about one inch inserted into the pipes. Mostly on sunny days, they will catch light and iridescence and sparkle, you know, as a person moves around the sculpture. Um, at certain sun angles, they will cast the light in such a way as to cast color spectrums onto the surrounding sculpture branches, trunks, and also onto the ground. It also lightens the end, the ends of the you know the sculptures. Again, it's part of their softening, you know, effect that they maybe wanted to carry forward. So here's all the concept updates summarized. Um, and then I also wanted to show you, um, you know, a kind of the daytime <coughs> draft rendering that, you know, we're working up for council. Um, uh, and so here's our time for discussion and motion. And the motion would be to approve the recommendation to council of the Dan Durgan Southside Grove Sculpture Concept for the Downtown Connection Center. Awesome. So. <laughs>
I have a question. Okay. So with, uh, I really, I really like it, but just some questions about birds and building nests in the hole that's going to project the sunbeam and then the holes and the bells. Like what is, we will probably have to look after to make sure nobody nests in that Oculus hole. It's going to be big enough. Um, I don't know the 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 the, the bell ones have. I mean, they have a clanger that's constantly moving. So that hole is just capturing wind. Those are very small, okay. and 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 you know because the air does move and flies that quite a bit of the time. There's not that many days that are completely static. There'll be a constantly motion, you know, clangor moving in there that will prevent nesting. But you're right about the Oculus, and it's a, certainly a concern I will, I will, I'm writing down right now to raise. That would be kind of cool. You know, although, <laughs> it, yeah, except for when, that day we want it to, the the sun sun it, it come to the sun We might have to, like, like, gently, gently <laughs> move the owl nest. You end up with the owl nest on the days of the eagle. <laughs> well, you talked about them putting like a, a yellow lens so it colors the light on. Okay. So I assume that's going to be one side, but maybe on the other side they can just put a clear. Right. Cover it with a clear lens. lens or something. Make sure no nesting. <coughs> Questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, you should. I have a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of out of color. <laughs> But I'd be willing to forward this to council just to see if uh, I can place bets on them talking about these as cell towers. To see how many of them will. Well, I was one of the people concerned about this cell tower book, and I am so um, excited about this new draft. And um, I, you know, it was so abstract at first, the first rendition of it. This really was. It's much more interesting. I I do wonder, can they really pull off all of these different <coughs> things that they've added? Um, yeah. yeah, they've been in talk with the uh, Magnum, um, in, uh, who uh, has made, made many art projects around this state, um, and uh, they've been in constant talk. And I, I will tell you, we had a. It's not these elements um, we are facing, just like with all of our projects, the difficulty of getting Corten steel. Um, so there is just a general supply issue, and that may impact cost, um, not to the extent that happened at the library <laughs> by any means. But we, as you know, we don't have a project that has come through without anywhere from a 25 to, you know, well, the library was over 100% increase in cost. We are, you know, getting the final numbers, but it isn't these elements that's adding either cost. It is, um, it is the, um, it's the steel itself. It's just the steel, and the cost of the steel. Um, so we're trying to get some, you know, final pricing for council, you know, because we need to write the contract. And we need to get it locked in. Um, <coughs> we'll certainly, you know, update you and work with the budget. Um, you know, but I don't have those numbers yet. With all that additional detail, the detail on the, the, tree, the tree trunks and the symbols. Yeah, there's going to be a little more engineering on that two and a half percent. I, I think that's of all the details. That's the one that has to have a, you know, it's going to have to have a, probably a stronger foundation underneath in order to hold that two and a half percent. And we think it's really important, though. I mean, I think part of that static look and maybe part of that for my too many people is was that rigidity and I right. think that 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 slope is subtle but it's really really key to to the look right. so that's where we're not sure how much more foundation we're gonna have to add to, to make that because we haven't paid for the engineering yet so um, it's coming in the next month or two but uh, I would say that's that's the detail that really might add a little cost because the foundation probably has to be bigger. How much bigger to be determined? I'm particularly thrilled with staff's work in um, you know translating all our ideas into the finished product. Um, all jokes aside. 
conveying our, our uh, comments, I think, was key to get the the updates to yeah. be what. The artists listen to the the recording. I mean, they weren't here. We don't usually have our artists here when you guys are doing approvals. So you know, uh, you don't. You know, just try to do that as a matter of practice, but they did listen and, uh, you know, they obviously, uh, you know, and I know I remember uh, our economic vitality director, you know, Heidi Hansen was there at that meeting and she made her comments and they took in the comments from the, um, you know, Southside Community Association, as well as the board um, of the uh, of mountain line. And that's, you know, that's originally where the whole sound idea came from, was from that board. And um, they really did listen. And like I said, you guys aren't seeing some of the failed iterations <laughs> that didn't come forward. Uh, we tried to make the branches just curve. Yeah, we got way too Susian. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, so uh, but, but maybe um, some of the commissioners have just been quietly listening. Folks on the call, do you have any comments or questions? I have a question. Um, I absolutely love this concept. I am. I have questions about the execution, and my question, I guess, is for fellow commissioners. And this is before my time, so my apologies for the fact that you know I'm coming to this game late. Um, but but you asked for the artists to to soften it and make it more organic. Did did they succeed in in that in in your thinking? We were particularly, I, I was particularly concerned, and we talked about this, that it had that looked like, you know, the, the cell phone tower look. And now having the angle, an angle and having the, and, and also the telescopic look that they had originally, now those have become bells and um, also the reflective glass or reflective um, material. The I, prisms. Yeah, and the, and then the right the prisms. I just think it's a much more alive. It has a lot more life to it now than than I did previously, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with Sandra. Um, I, I if there's any hesitation in your voice when you're asking that comment, I can see where that comes from. Only because it, no matter how much you work on this, it's always going to have an element of not being natural because it's not. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, but as far as artistic uh, freedom is concerned, I think that they started to really incorporate that through our comments. And um, I I have been hesitant about this piece since day one, but I I, I will definitely be moving you know moving it forward. I, thanks, Anthony. I appreciate that. I. I, I, I get that it's it's made great progress, and as I said, I really enjoy the concept. I, the the, the fi final product just doesn't seem. I don't know. I I I know you've all put a lot of lot of hard work into that, and I don't want to. I, I, I'm certainly not going to suggest backtracking or anything like that because of my unfounded, <laughs> random artistic opinion. But yeah, I'm I'm still digesting it. <clears throat> Well, it's good. It's good that you're that you're speaking up about things like this, um, and it will help you formulate your ideas in the future. In my opinion, um, it sometimes it's challenging for me to realize that I'm not the artist. I'm the not, and I'm not the community that decided this. I'm just the one that's pushing the funding forward. Um, and when I can, I step in. So thank you for that. You're also free to not support something that doesn't sit well with you. That's completely your <laughs> option. Even if it's just a protest okay. vote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, yeah, I know Commissioner Verrill and Commissioner Johnson have not had as much time, obviously, with this, you know, with this project as the rest of the commissioners because they just came on. I did give both of them at least a preview of the old concept um, in a meeting, you know, but I know it's not the same as living the entire process. Um, and so we, you know, but we did the best we could. <laughs> Actually, Chair Cruz, I'm interested to hear your thoughts because you actually um, found the, the initial design. You were you were happy with the initial design, yeah. so it's moved away from that kind of really sleek, um, sharp uh, sculpture. And so, yeah, your thoughts on this? I I think from the get go, these folks have been really thoughtful about 
everything they've added to the art project in terms of Flagstaff, in terms of our comments, in terms of, so I was fine with it to start with. Yes, absolutely, I, I loved it. Um, but I'm fine with this too. I think that they went back and they did what um, what the group wanted and it didn't really change the, it didn't change the original concept for me enough to where, you know, I don't like it, you know what I mean? What they did is they they made them look and seem more like trees, and then they added, you know, the sound. They added the the prism, which is going to be reflective of rainbows. They added the hole in the tree that's going to reflect on the solstice ease. Is that the plural of solstice? Um, and so I think it's lovely. You know, the only, like, again, the only thing when when the hole came out first, I thought, oh my god, I can see a bird nesting in that thing. Yeah, if it right. remains a right, hole. Right. Um, but you know, the, the two and a half inch angle, the hole that's going to reflect the sun, the placement of, of the trees, the placement of the trees didn't change. But I just think my concern, honestly, is it's such a precise installation that's not like all welded onto a base that they can just move the base. Like all these things are going to have to be very precisely moved in five to seven years so that everything stays the same in terms of the light, right? And so I think it's lovely, um, but I, I will be curious to see what happens oh, when I, it gets The moving moved. process will be, you know, a, a, a thing, but sculptures, very intricate sculptures have been moved over, <laughs> oh, you know, Dining room walls of Goya are now in the Prado. I mean, people, you know, it, it, you know, we have some original, est you know, estimates. Um, but you know, moving also the plaza elements because it's not, you know, those are, you know, the boulders and and everything. So you can just um, roll those, right? Yeah, we can <laughs> roll those. Um, we just all go down there, yeah. right? <laughs> well, listen, that's very. But I mean, it, it's cool. quite possible we'll, we'll be pulling that whole foundation out. But my 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 concern is not moving it per se, but if there's some kind of lag in having to store it, um, um, yeah. you know, between the phase, if we can move it in one move versus move it to storage and then move it yeah. back out, mm -hmm. that's you know, I would ideally like it to be moved right onto the civic space site. But you know that's a five to seven year down the line problem. Might be somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck no. I, I, I have to say, I have to say to completion. Okay, all right, all right. I swear. I like. <laughs> all right. Um, did the Commissioner Zucker and uh, Commissioner McGrath and Commissioner Johnson any comments? Say we approve this tonight and it goes to city council and they have the same reservations they or you know they have to digest it similar to commissioner barrel then what happens i i I'm sorry i couldn't what hear happens you. if city council has can't approve it automatically because they have reservations <laughs> if we do uh, we would hear the reservations um and if um you know, we would probably get a continuance as long as long as it was an outright, you know, um, lack of, you know, disapproval. You know, disapproval is 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 a whole, whole different matter. But if they had reservations, I would bring their reservations back, you know, back to you first, and then we would go back to council. I mean, give the artists a chance to address them. I mean, just like just like you guys had your provisional approval and we addressed your concerns, we would do the same thing with council. Well, and also a way to be proactive in the procedure is you can show up as a commissioner to that meeting and if um, there's any input that you could have give to council to set them at ease, I'm sure that you would be called up to the dais by uh, staff potentially. And, and I'm going to revise my answer. We actually were discussing today that we think we're going to take it to a work session first and take it for approval two to four weeks later. And I was just remembering our conversation earlier today, um, you know, because we have reviewed this with the city manager and Heidi in a separate meeting. And uh, so we were we were deciding that that would probably be the best way, because if they have comments in a work session, 
by the time we get it to them for the approval, we can incorporate those changes. Can I, can I just add, there's a black and white answer though, that they can say no. Yes, they can say the no. Council can say no, because it is an approval question because it's over 50,000. So yes, they can say no. This is where, you know, commissioners speaking, um, <laughs> that we're getting the right product according to their matters. And that work session gives us time to come back and, and work with everyone um, before going with the actual contract if necessary. I just wanted to make that. There is yes. a black and white answer. That, yeah. That yeah. With something like this, council can say no. If we're out there in our perspective, that it could fail. Well, if, they, if you show this mock up, I mean, I think it looks just great. Yeah, and this yeah. is the, you know, we've been working on a, as you know, rendering a 3D sculpture in 2D is a difficult thing to actually show what it's going to really be like. As you know, and so we have been working with, this is uh, Norris has um, been working on this for the whole building and making a much more, at least 3D looking uh, rendering to try to carry a little bit more of the feel. But you know, it is, it is almost an impossible <laughs> task uh, to fully do it. Um, Commissioner McGrath? Uh, I'll just say, I really like the way this has evolved over time since we first saw it. I like changes a lot when you first, Jenna, when you first told me, you know, the, the size of the lion and the trees was changing. I was kind of skeptical about how it was going to be, but I think they did a really great job with it. And I'll just say I'm already with this rendering, I'm already attached to the sculpture being in its phase one location. And I'm going to be disappointed uh, when it has to move in five to seven years to phase two, but uh, I'm sure I'll like it just fine then as well. No, I, I really like the way this has come along and uh, really impressed with what they've done. Thank you. And then Commissioner Johnson. Claire, do you have any questions or comments? So can I get a motion to approve the um, concept as presented? Oh. I'd like to make a motion to approve the concept as presented to council. Thank you. May I get a second? Second. second. And, and before we vote, can I just say, I, I really do thank uh, all the staff time, definitely the artist's time uh, and the commission's time. And I realize I'm late to the game and, and it may not have sunk in with me yet, but, but I really, really do value all the time and energy and talent that have gone into this. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to approve the Downtown Connection Center art concept, Southside Grove sculpture as presented with Updates. Any further discussion? I'd just like to ask the staff um, let us know when those dates are that they're going before council so that way we can um, present ourselves if we so feel. It's so noted. Thank you. Did you have Commissioner McGrath as a second on that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions before we vote or comments before we vote? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Opposed. Thank you. Anyone abstain? The motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. Moving forward to um, now, we just have a discussion item the BPAC retreat priority scoring. I know it's late. I, we had a full agenda again, but I did want to share, obviously, the results with you, and we can, we can, you know, um, you know, discuss as much as we want, and it will be, you know, this is part of a, a continuing discussion until we get to that final budget vote in March, right? So uh, probably every month we're going to have a little bit. So. Um, if you recall, we had two different votes. One was, you know, we've already started projects. Um, all of the projects that are not yet initiated, um, that we have, you know, ready to go and have been highly prioritized, you know, I asked you to uh, prioritize those FY24 projects that haven't been initiated yet. And I think what really stood out to me was that, um, you know, the Rio de Flag projects that 
you know, came out. Obviously, you guys had five hundred thousand dollar placeholders for four years, so you had already highly prioritized that it was your number one um, of of you know of the commissioners who were present. Um, you know, it was uh, you know the number one choice of everybody but one. Um, and so I take that as a you know to really initiate that and get going. Um, and then you also thought very important, a kind of close second was it getting that Swizer Canyon roundabout initiated. Um, and so, you know, the others were kind of, you know, they were close. They were they were closer in score. They were more of an average. So, you know, maybe, you know, we might, you know, look at them, but I kind of took the Rio de Flag and the Switzer Canyon as the most important ones to take as soon as we possibly can. Um, the Rio de Flag will require me to to, to get involved and say, yes, we're on board. We're, we're going to do those spaces. When we actually do them, I fall into FY24, but or even FY25, but I'm, I'm telling them to preserve those spaces for us. And so that will be done immediately. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, the, the other projects too, which are, you know, related to the DCC and the, and it was more traffic signal cabinets, um, you know, phase four, three to four, you know, they're all kind of the same, I, you know, have, you know, about the same ranking, they're not exactly the same. Um, and then uh, last of that group was, yes, we need to do the Route 66 landscaping, but it wasn't the highest time priority for FY24. Um, but not, not that we're putting it aside. None of these are put aside. It's just rank of timing. Um, and then in the five year plan, and these were the projects outside of the top 10. <coughs> the one that, if you remember, were 11, 17, and then the new, um, new project ideas. And so, what really, you know, what, um, you know, you can kind of see the scores here, but I'll, <coughs> I can go ahead, but the City Hall lawn. I kind of really more highly raised uh, as the you know number one again. It had like three uh, number one, you know rankings, um, and then the East Side streetscape beautification, you know, really came in as a you know a high priority to keep keep working on that. What it is, how do we do it? Um, you know, so I really took that to heart. But I will just show you kind of in ranked order. Um, you know, without looking at all the individual scores, you know, where we fell. So we have the <coughs> um, City Hall lawn 17, you know, um, you know, which is a pretty low score. And then the East Side Streetscape at 21. And then we kind of have a, you know, the next kind of is the Habitat for Humanity at Timber Sky. Um, and the Butler uh, Four Street improvements kind of came in, you know, kind of, you know, um, Actually, the, the the Butler Street is, you know, those two kind of came in close together, 27 and 30. And then we kind of got another little bit of a jump, and we have the Foots Trail sculptures, the Milton uh, Butler drainage, which may be part of the downtown mile, we're not sure. Then the Common Thread, Monarch Butterfly, those are kind of all, you know, again, more clustered together. Pluto, just like as, as a planet, comes dead last. <laughs> <laughs> Just that. <laughs> um, it just means it, it, it just gets pushed out into the fifth year for that five year plan. That's in the ones at the bottom. We're not losing any of these projects in the five year plan. I want to make that crystal clear. It's just that those at the bottom are going to be in year five, you know, and then maybe, maybe one of them rises, you know, in a later, you know, budget, you know, because it becomes more viable or more important to the commission at that time. So, you know, but it just means in my five year plan, you're going to see them more in your the fifth year. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I just, you know, wanted to share those results and were you surprised or did you have any comments? Um, but, you know, we, we, we saw it worked, uh, you know, actually now I have to start trying to fit them in that five year budget and assign numbers to them and, you know, that work is still to be done, but. I don't feel like my scores were counted. <laughs> so 
Okay. Jana, I just want to. S- Go ahead. Go ahead. I, Jana, I just want to applaud you on the process. I thought I thought the way you went about that was a very good way to to navigate uh, commissions, uh, varying interests, and you you got a good synthesis here that I think was was well done. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Farrell. Does anybody else, uh, Tina? Any comments, Mr. Zecker? Sorry. <laughs> it's hard no, to no. Lunch and then I have to call you Commissioner Zecker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no comments for me. I'll just echo what Commissioner Verrill said. Thank you for all of your work and putting this together. And um, I, I just think it's a. I mean, just like last year, I think it's a re- really effective process to get everybody's voice heard and figure out where we stand. Commissioner McGrath. I agree with everything said. Uh, great process, <coughs> interesting results. I like it. Yeah, and I don't know if Commissioner Johnson is back, but it, I know you weren't able to be part of the retreat, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to update you on a one on one at it, you know, soon, as soon as you're ready. Oh, thank you, Jamba. So hearing no other discussion on the retreat party scoring, we'll move now to to and f- to and from items. City staff, you're up. None. <laughs> I've heard my voice enough tonight. <laughs> I don't have any um, except thanks to everybody who is here with us virtually and in person. We really appreciate your participation in terms of your um, opinion, suggestions, questions and comments. Um, City Council, uh, Vice Mayor Sweet is not here. Um, are there any other two from items from the commission? Are, are two, is two from on the agenda where we add things to the next month's agenda or am I not doing this right? That, that, that's number five. That's, that's number five. five. Okay, sorry. Sorry. On my phone, I can't see the agenda. I'll wait. It's coming up. So if there are no two from items from the commission, now we move uh, to request for future agenda items. Commissioner Harrell. <laughs> yeah, um, I, have, I have two questions, both of which are historic and I'm sure you can answer them. Um, I was at a meeting, I don't remember what this, what city meeting this was a year ago or so in, in, the, in the throes of the pandemic, where we were one of the, it was, maybe it was a cultural commission, um, and and one of the subjects was doing a better job of embracing the indig- indigenous culture in Flagstaff. Um, and one of the things that I don't know if this is an, a, a BPAC agenda item, I guess it's an agenda item for every commission in the whole darn city. Uh, where do I bring up the idea of, of wanting to uh, embrace our indigenous cultures more by some street renaming. By some what? Street renaming. Street renaming. Street renaming. Oh, street I believe renaming. that it goes potentially through traffic. I mean, we have seen it happen recently. So the models in place, you may be aware, Agassiz became WC Riles. Um, it, it, we can find out exactly how that path looks, but it ends at council. I think traffic is responsible for street names, so we'd start there. But Jana and I can figure that out. There'd be signage involved, so that might be a place that BPAC could could help sponsor some of this if that was our inclination. And by the way, I'm not looking at doing this anytime soon. I'm okay if if Jana's time pushes this out to 2026 or 2036. But I don't know. I don't but know. But see. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure the, the the sign unless somebody wants to make a a, 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 a special a, sign. A special sign would be in you know BPAC zone, but as far as our indig- you know we have indigenous representation money, and we have an indigenous representation project that's in motion, and we have one to be part of perhaps the cultural center in the future at the um, the annex. You know we're you know, like, you know, on all the projects, um, we've included representation on our selection panels and on our focus groups um, for the indigenous community. Um, you, you can see as part of the um, Southside Grove, you know, we are 
Please. We went right for the. I, I present most of our our work to the Indigenous Culture Commission and get their feedback as well um, whenever it's appropriate. So I don't, you know, we have had that as kind of part of our 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 you know yeah. outlook. Can I just add? So yeah. one of the reasons I was thinking I, that was more as like a, we can help you know how to start a process with a different commission rather than that the beautification public art program would be moving on that I, I hope you like it just doesn't feel like it's within our yeah. scope unless okay. there's some some piece of it i'm missing but what i meant is i'm happy to help you figure out how to get that done as a citizen because okay so indigenous culture i was just going to add that unless you could tie it to a specific public art piece or some sort of beautification that um, it would probably be best for you to follow um, another process. Yeah. Okay, so I'll look at the Indigenous Culture and Traffic Commissions. I okay. At my, our, uh, just our discussion at the retreat about inviting um, heroes or the Indigenous Circle, circle of to, yeah, to come and meet with us, so, you know, just have a conversation so that we can hear more about what their desires are, concerns are, yeah, as, as we do our work. Yeah. And Chris, uh, that reminds me uh, when we talk about uh, as commissioners moving out and branching out to other commissions and sitting in with them, that might be a perfect opportunity for you to get a, a you know, a fill of the room and then and see how you can translate some of that vision that you're you're obviously seeing into something that we can work with in the future just by being really connected to that group or visiting those groups. I like that. Thanks. Uh, my other suggestion in, in somewhere in the downtown mile project, which I realize we, none of us have thoroughly wrapped our brains around, and, and I'm sure this conversation has been had uh, and I, I mentioned it very briefly last last month, but the, the idea of, of a there there, the same way that there's that sign in Reno, um, as I'm sure this commission's talked about that. Um, what has been the thought about something like that? Yeah, well, so, yeah, so this isn't a time for, you know, in a way a discussion. Oh. We're not, is, is this a future agenda item? Um, yes, you're correct. Obviously we're going to have a, at some point, it, it's not ready yet, a, a, a discussion on the downtown mile. But I'm not sure if that's your your, your question or, um, I mean, what the opportunities are for the Public Art Commission in the downtown mile will be a future agenda item. Did you want more than that as a future agenda item? My future agenda item is a, a sign that was similar to the one in Reno. So I guess we need two additional commissioners to make that a future agenda item. Yeah, when, uh, when we have time. Or when the downtown mall comes up. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it could, be a, it could be a very short meeting. It could be a very long one. <laughs> but that's what demands to be heard. So that's one. We're exploring that. Okay. All right. Any other requests for future agenda items? Hearing none, the next BPEC meeting is on Monday, December 12th at 4 p.m. using the same format as we are using today hybrid here and um, City Hall and online. And I'll adjourn the meeting at 6 26 p.m. Thank you, folks. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.